The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Before we could continue today's discourse, very much essential for us to note the human history being divided according to the divine interpretation of my Lord. And the only term we can use is dispensation. This term which could make us to have a thorough knowledge to know very particularly about the Old Testament times. And not only that, it makes further for us to have information pertaining to the tactical victory of our Lord of the eschatological events after the rapture of this church age, what we are in. And in order to generally generalize some of the people who have known about the Bible, the 70 weeks determined upon the people of Israelites, a sudden insertion between the 69th and the 70th week, that's we, the church, we are here right now. Our Lord God is the same, and the principles of dealing with various dispensations is different. He dealt with the people of Israelites, pertaining with the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as much required to be as the ministry of endowment. But when we come to the church age, after the ascension and session of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that is after a resurrection, the department of our Lord made him to send the comforter, the help, the guide, the paraclete one, the only mentor, so that this church age believers being highly privileged with the greatest of all times opportunity that can never come again have been suddenly inserted by putting an halt to the 69th week and not to execute the 70th week and started this church age. This church age which does not include any uncommon thing this church age is no difference between the Israelites and the Gentiles. This church age is a combination for each and every member of the human race who is being, being born. So that after believing in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they can have this life everlasting. The six Jews who went along with Peter, when Peter went to Cornelius to speak the word of the Lord, while he was at speaking, the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And they did magnify God by speaking in other languages to show that there is no difference between the Israelites and at them. It is not the same trend that this today the church age people should follow. That whenever you are being baptized, after your baptism, you will be receiving these tongues and you will be magnifying the Lord, which is a wrong thing. The problem is that you don't have proper understanding of the scripture so that you can really understand the true worth of glorifying my Lord by accurately knowing him. When we look upon the book of Acts, it is the first prehistorical church age trials or the church age account 
and in the church age account they have not had the completed canon of scripture which further developed into the full body through the mystery doctrine of the church which written by apostle paul in philippians ephesians and colossians they couldn't come till to that point we have a great lessons to be learned in acts 9 10 and 11 in the fear of the Lord, in the comfort of the Spirit, they would have been multiplied more and more so that they can have the true inner peace. When they were in the fear of the Lord, walking in the fear of the Lord, they had the comfort of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But when we come to the full grown up body in Christ, the temporary things being turned out and into the permanency of this adult realm, The same mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, writes for us and tells it is no longer the reverse process, the fear of the Lord, and you have the comfort of the Holy Spirit. But it has to be turned again to tell, live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, so that you can have the comfort of the fear of the Lord. Because we have been told to be controlled of the Spirit, be filled of the Spirit. Not gibberishly jumping around, dancing around, doing this X, Y, Z, trends. But it is of a great lesson that we need to learn when we live in the Spirit, when we walk in the Spirit. Our delight will be in the fear of my Lord, said even Isaiah 11. Referring to the attributes of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ while he's going to execute his work. A spirit of wisdom, spirit of counsel, spirit of understanding. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And his delight will be to do the fear of the Lord. That's no way possible until and unless we walk in the spirit. And live in the spirit. The trends have been totally changed. While they couldn't have the completed canon of scripture, they were walking in some extension. They were walking in the same realm of the fear of the Lord as Cornelius did by giving alms and thanksgiving to the Lord. But when we come over here to look upon understanding when the completed body has been formed and when we are dealing with sound doctrine in the Bible, the trends have been totally changed. Now it's the spirit, the divine dinosphere is the spirit, the power of base of operation is Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And if it is not by the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is no way possible for you to understand the true purpose, why as such you have been kept alive. And many of the so-called theologians want the first century revival. What first century revival you can have, like the apostles did? Better than them, you are much more advantaged. Do you know why? They couldn't assemble into one body all the writings of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So that they could look what is perfection and complete. But right now we, when we are standing in the church age, in this 21st century of our Lord, right from the 15th century, the KJV version came out. The Protestantism came out. The reformer leaders who bought us the Bible in our hands. It took time for them to understand the importance of the word of the Lord. That's what we do find. The reformers could fight and could get back for us the freedom to get Bible, but they failed to explain what is the spiritual life. What is the mystery doctrine of the church? When the 15th century people themselves, they couldn't get, how come the first century apostles can do it? Till the time the Bible was not been assembled. Now they are not able to differentiate between the gifts, whether they are temporary or permanent. They still want to linger around those things and they want to say, I still speak in tongues, I want to do miracles, I want to do healings. I don't deny the sovereignty of my Lord. If my Lord does, he does it directly to you, not through a mediator as the so-called clerks who have rise to the call. Who are tempering you or who are really taking you to mortar with untempered mortar. And telling peace, peace, where there is no peace. And becoming elders, having something idols in their hearts. And coming to follow and worship my Lord. Even individual righteousness has been doubted today for the way they walk in the sight of my Lord. 
They want to know the reason what it is. They are not able to get out with their own lust patterns of false in nature to be fulfilled. No matter however you may think you may reign, lies originated from Satan, the being the father of lies, always it's, it will be defeated. It has lost almost all, all the battle in the strategic victory of my Lord on the cross. There is nothing except to wag with its tail. The head has been absolutely crushed off. And this man they want to follow by catching the tail and they want to reign. The men who stand in the pulpit without proper exegesis, proper isogogics, proper categories, without having proper dispensing technique of dispensations and rightly dividing the word of the Lord. Why I call them it is lies, because they have not searched diligently the completed canon of scripture, and they have not come to the mystery doctrine, neither they have learned the sophisticated spiritual lie. It's really very painful for us to note the corpus of the church doctrine, which includes these three epistles, have been absolutely neglected to look and to understand the great sophisticated spiritual life given for us before the foundation of the world, being predestined to be holy and blameless in the sight of the Lord, as we are being born by the will of God. It's really very pathetic for us to note that the so-called pastor teachers were standing in the pulpits have really been exchanging the glory of Lord for a lie, exchanging the glory of Lord for their ignorance and arrogance, thinking that this could be the burden of the Lord, this could be the word of the Lord. And where do they end up? Neither themselves, they make a way for others to follow through, but through their popery and their teachings, they don't want to make, to look really to the intention the post-canon period of the church age. The true bona fide spiritual gift of a pastor teacher only to a male believer, never to a female as well. They don't want to even look and speculate upon that. They say, if we speculate, even the great Charles Ryer, he writes, why can't a woman be have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to train up the children of a Sunday school? Dear brethren, it is only for a male believer. A woman can learn from her husband when a husband and woman attends the church from a pastor teacher. And a woman, as she grows up, she can learn and she can train up the children with great patience. And that does not, that, that does not necessarily mean that she needs to have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher defiling my Lord's sanctuary. It's of a very tough time for us to note the principles being absolutely changed, the reality of truth absolutely being taught. And we are no longer here to be tossed to and fro by every slight of doctrine that comes. We are here to have a firm, fixed mind, and that is not possible until and unless Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controls us, takes lead of us, and trains us and teaches us from a right mentor who has in return also had the same bona fide gift in past. It's very pathetic for us to note that though we have been, though we have been extrapolated into this church age between these two advents, we are still looking and lagging like the Old Testament saints, waiting for endowment. How would it be not for a businessman to note if he's putting one coin of a dollar or a rupee into his business and if he's getting thousand rupees, one thousand percent profit, will he not be happy for that? I think there will not be any businessman to calculate why and how such kind of a great profit had come by one coin yielding one thousand dollars or one thousand rupees. And how much more will it not be for us? that this one unique spiritual life given for us will in return exchange for a glory of 1,000 years in the millennium. 
We the churches believers have been given this caliber. We the churches believers have been made alicaniketesis. We the churches believers are no longer slaves but friends of our Lord. We the churches believers have been given this great privilege. Being termed out as alicaniketesis, new spiritual spaces in Christ. And we, the church's believers, have been given for us a certain set of design rules and regulations to be filled with the Spirit, not to grieve, not to squelch, not to lie to the mental ministry of life, get the Holy Spirit. And when you live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit, so that you can have the fear of the Lord, which could be thoroughly made a quick understanding or delight for you to really know what is the fear of the Lord. The things which the pertaining to my Christ, our Lord, in Isaiah 11 quoted for us long back, before the church age could begin. And when the book of Acts comes, the people they are searching out to walk in the fear of the Lord so that they can have the comfort of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and they could be multiplied by increasing day by day to have the peace of the Lord. When they were having the fear of the Lord, there was a comfort of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But what does the word of the Lord prophecy concerning my Christ? He will have the spirit of fear and the spirit of understanding of the Lord, so that he will be made quick to understand what is the delight of the Lord. So as such, now we being born to the second Adam, spiritually, I meant to say. We being termed out as Alec Enicetesus, spiritually. We are a new spiritual species in Christ, the church is believers. That's why for the third royal patent of my Lord, King of kings and Lord of lords, the bright morning star, we are the royal family as bride. We are the family members of Christ. And do you know what? The same power what Lord God the Holy Spirit has been endued to write upon Isaiah, to write about the characteristics of my Christ, the same things have to be given for us today when the completion of canon has come. The church age began, it was like exactly the Old Testament saints who were following in the fear of the Lord, and they couldn't be noted to have the comfort of the Spirit. But now, the post canon period clearly teaches to us, you are being permanently indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and when you walk in the Spirit, it will make you to learn how to get yourself oriented to the fear of the Lord. The same, the same thing as of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has gone through. That's why we, the children of Christ, being given the privilege to call Abba Father, have to be thinking of a very great example. This great example by one unique spiritual life given for us. This unique dispensation of the spiritual life. Maybe after your span, after believing in Christ from your salvation till to the point of your death. That is what your face to the logistical grace begins. Today, if you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone, right from this day, your salvation being secured, given to you eternal life, till to the point of your death. Maybe you can count it for some 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. For some even 100 years, who could say I'm a believer? This period is nothing when compared to 1,000 years of glory in Christ when we are going to come back into this earth to rule in the millennium rule of Christ. This only short span of time, maybe 30 years, 40 years, is a short span of time for us to diligently prepare ourselves. That is what those who so rapingly will gain the great plenty of goods with great happiness. Your sowing is in weeping. Those are not sentiments to be written in the book of Psalms. It is the very word of my Lord. It is the true mind of my Christ. And Jehovah's word is always right. And there is nothing that could be bought enough for you to be comparison for it. And in this true comparison of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we do have this great verse. Those who sow in weeping shall return with great happiness. That's the sorrow and the sufferings that we go through, not for your own wrong decisions as punitive actions, but 
the sufferings which you have to go through as it is required a suffering for blessing when you are being tested. Do you have the same capacity? Do you have the same momentum? Do you have the same desire to grow up and to learn in the knowledge of Bible doctrine? It is what it will be training you up to get the capacity to face any danger or any situation in life. And that capacity will be strengthened in your inner soul to change your thinking. So that you should align yourselves in the thinking of Christ. As my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ endured the cross. We will not be t tested about that's what our Lord has gone. If our Lord has taken 1,000 tons of load, you will not even be given one ton of load. Already my Lord has tested and given for you the same divine dynosphere, the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which he has endured through right from the day of his birth, from the cradle till to the point of his resurrection. The ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which was with the Lord God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the same with us today, indwelling in us. And how morons we are not able to understand. Still believing to look upon the first century revival. Still believing to look upon the way how they lay upon the hands the spoken tongues and they want to follow these trends and really defile and blaspheme my Christ. Anything spoken against my Lord will be easily forgiven, saith our Lord, in Luke chapter 12. But if you blaspheme, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you will really have a tough time. You will not be forgiven. A believer cannot blaspheme, my Lord. A blaspheme means not to believe in Christ. An unbeliever will do that. But a believer can grieve and squelch and lie to the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, each and every breath he takes. And when he is grieving and squelching, he is not in the same divine dynosphere which our Lord executed. In the same divine dynosphere, our Lord could take 1,000 tons of load. In the same divine dynosphere where you and I will want to stand and we can execute the protocol plan of God, are not capable of taking even one ton of load. Do you know why? I meant to say metamorphically to the realm of the sufferings that we have to go through in this earth. Do you know why? We don't have capacity, we don't have fellowship with Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was in a true fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And he was having doctrine in his mind to recollect. And that's why the fifth phrase on the cross, I am thirsty. The same joy, reverence, absorption, realization which could be given to the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in his physical realm to our Christ, our Lord. The same thing will be given to you provided you learn doctrine. Provided you recollect doctrine to your mind. But what is happening in our church? What is happening in our teachings in the pulpits? They are never even worried to look. That we are into this great dispensation of all time. They are never even worried to consider and really make a thorough understanding of this unique spiritual life. They are never even able to look and to come back and even have a look as such. What it is to have the fear of the Lord. It demands to have the spirit of the Lord completely controlling us. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was been told. That he has been given the spirit of understanding and the spirit of the fear of the Lord, so that he could thoroughly stand for Christ. The same spirit has been given unto us. And since we are out of fellowship, not walking in the truth and the reality of the word of the Lord, we are just wasting it by grieving and squelching and lying to the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, dear brethren. We, the church age believers, have been given this great and unique privilege for us that the time you spend in this logistical grace, maybe 30 years after salvation, 40 years after salvation, 50 years after salvation, it is a target for you to become an invisible hero. You will never be recorded in the history pages of this world. You are an anonymous. But in the temple of my living Lord, you will be a great one. Do you know you will be called as a pillar? And do you know what the pillar stands for? The building's weight will stand upon that pillar. If that pillar is not there, the building gets collapsed. And the cost paid by the laws of Nazarite by Samson, you learn those two pillars being 
drilled out and minimum 3,000 to 4,000 people have been dead at the moment of he was dying himself. The pillars were been collapsed and that pillars had led them thinking that they were able to give a great sacrifice to their god, gods of Philistines. And they bought a great sacrifice like Samson. And when he prayed unto the Lord, when he got the power, he pulled down the pillars, and you note the realm or the recorded in the Bible, what it ended up. Exactly same to same thing we can learn today. You are a pillar of Christ in the temple of God. You and I can be a pillar of my Lord recorded eternally in the history pages of heaven in Revelation 3, 11 and 12. As an elders, as the leaders, not being against to my Lord like the people recorded in Ezekiel chapter 14. If we are truly the elders of the church who holds doctrine in their hand, they should be teachers of doctrine to the next generation. They are a pillar to my Lord wherewith they can learn doctrine and apply to it. Galatians 2.9 explains for us that symbol. And 1 Timothy 3.15 comes to the point of telling to us the importance of the church. Why we are being called out as an assembly. Here is a manufacturing of those pillars. Because the assembly itself is a ground and pillar of truth. And the people will come here to learn doctrine so that they can in return become pillar. Pillar in each and every manner of walk of the life they walk through. And dear brethren, you all may be thinking, we are here believers, believing in Christ is enough. But you will never learn to know what is after salvation? Because certain believers who are still following the first century, a realm of teaching of Apostle Acts, they are not even being aware by the so-called morons who have been taken into church that they are already being saved by believing in Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And they want to add works deeds and they want to say until and unless I gibberishly jump dance and do this and do that until and unless I lay down my hands upon you you are not going to get this gift you are not going to do this at the moment of salvation itself you are being baptized into the mental ministry of Lord get the Holy Spirit by the baptism of the Spirit and each and every believer has been given at least one minimum one spiritual gift and as you grow up and reach the personal sense of destiny, the unique spiritual life explained for us in the Philippians, Ephesians, and Colossians, till the point you could reach there, you cannot come to know what is your spiritual gift. Your personal sense of destiny acquaints you with the grace orientation followed by doctrinal orientation after your faith trust principle being fulfilled through constant rebound and being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You will never know what is your spiritual gift. And to effectively use the spiritual gift, it demands doctrine as never before. Without the principal power of doctrine given to you, you cannot learn. You cannot consider. You cannot move. And it's a very great pain in our hearts that we find many men being ignorant of this great fact of Bible doctrine. And they are still happy enough to look that which is no way possible for them to look and to consider without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to know that where are we in this church. So being extrapolated and given for us this church age, and further in that given for us the extrapolation of this mystery doctrine of the church, we the believers of Alekene Ketesis have to reach that great worth of 1,000 years of rule in millennium when we become invisible heroes and when we become winner believers in Christ by the daily intake of Bible doctrine and fulfill the three stages, spiritual self-esteem followed by spiritual autonomy and then by spiritual maturity so that it is no longer who we live but Christ who lives in us, the hope of glory in each and every facet of the walk that we walk in Christ. And that is what you and I have to take, dear brethren. And if it is not so, 
then he have lost the battle long back. It is of a very much great pain for us to note that when this rapture occurs, once again the 70th year will take place, 70th week will take place, as mentioned to Daniel. And in the 70th week, we will no longer be here on this earth. And we do not know when that rapture could occur. We may be thinking, Lord delays, I can enjoy my life. You do not know when is the rapture. If Lord seems fit for delay, Lord has a purpose on it. And we are here to know and to look and to understand that the battle will be won always by the truth, not by the lies. Though now the truth has been marred by this people's imagination, by the teachings of this people, but ultimately the winner will be the truth. And we are here given the power to stand by the truth when we worship our Lord in spirit and in the truth. Because truth has been originated by my Lord, and my Lord is the sovereign one, the author of the truth. It may be today one, one pivot of one man as it was in the realm of Moses to raise the feeble-handed which was been falling down by one side Aaron, the other side Joshua. The same thing may be today in this apostate period, one man fighting for the battle for pivot. But ultimately it will be the winner of the truth. Truth will never lose its battle. Because truth has been backed up by Lord God the Father in heaven. He is the origin of the truth. And the people who are valiant for the truth, Lord will strengthen himself on the sides of them. Says Second Chronicles 16.9. Whose hearts are loyal for the truth. Lord trains their fingers for big battles. Dear brethren, do not go to think. That our time will be still delayed. I can see my children, children. Rapture may be happening. After I die, after my children die, after my grandchildren die. We do not know when is the moment of this rapture. Every day is a preparation for Christ. Every day, day by day, is a renovation in the knowledge of Christ has been demanded by our Lord. And we just can't stand here and tell around, think around, this around. And dance around with our vain imaginations of thoughts. But rather we are here to tell only one simple truth. The one simple truth in Christ. Today is a time for you to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. And God gives greater grace to the humble believer who wants to learn more doctrine. Who is at the point of a death. Because... When he has rejected warring discipline, intensified stage of discipline and sin unto death, and if he rebounds and gets back into fellowship, and if he desires for the knowledge of truth, Lord seems fit as he has extended the life by reversing back the sundial of Ezekiel. So he may extend this life of the believer as well when he wants to grow up in the knowledge of Christ. But we need to know that we are being born by the Spirit, in the Spirit, to the Spirit, for Christ. And when we are being controlled of the Spirit, it will cause us to be in the fear of my Lord. The spirit of the fear in having the true delight of Christ. Dear brethren, the only clause of exception is, we do not know when is the rapture. So we should be bettering every day. So that we could be the best at the moment of rapture. The Lord could take us back home. And after this, again, the 70th week will follow the seven years of great tribulation for the Israelites. And furthermore, in whichever place of the corner of the world they are, we will be coming back again to rule with Christ in the millennium. And what a great privilege it would be for us to invest this small life after salvation, the logistical grace of life, and yield 1,000 years of glory in Christ. Isn't it great? then why do we need to waste each and every day? Then why do we need to waste each and every year that has been renovated upon us? Then why do we need to go around like a warring after the war wind, sowing to the wind and reaping war wind, 
And why do we need to fulfill the lust patterns of our roles in nature by constantly grieving and squelching the Lord God, the Holy Spirit who indwells in us? Rather than being controlled of the Spirit, living in the Spirit and walking in the Spirit and yielding the fruit of the Spirit. That is to learn Bible doctrine because we cannot have the true worship of our Lord until unless we have the true worship to be done in spirit and in truth. Then why do we want to live a life that is vain? The so-called Pentecostal crowds which are running around, dancing around, doing around this and that. They have really failed, utterly failed. know the reality of the word and they have failed enough to go cross the book of Acts they are still into the chapters of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 they are not even worried to look at Acts chapter 10 and tell what is the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at the moment of salvation, by faith alone, in Christ alone. Far less they can come and look upon the baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Far less they can come upon and look the reality given for us in Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, the mystery doctrine of the church age. Far less they can come upon and look and understand the principles given to a pastor teacher in 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. So that even far less enough to come and look what is the true fellowship in Christ through using the privacy of our priesthood in using rebound in First John. When you are not able to cross the book of Acts, how can you read the other things? When you have fixed your principles, your doctrines, your rudiments of men upon book of Acts, then when you will fix upon the mystery doctrine which has been extrapolated, the carpus of the church age. And we all want to come again and be called as believers. And we all want to tell we all have equality. We all have equality only who are here on this earth, dear brethren. Equal privilege and equal opportunity given for you to invest your time so that you can come back and work in 1,000 years of millennium rule. That's the only equality what you can have. And once you die out of this world, either sin unto death, or in the dying grace, whichever Lord seems fit to take you back home, if you are not negative, then you will be taken back comfortably home with the dying grace, whichever Lord seems fit. And if you are negative and not grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, first warning discipline, then intensified stage of discipline, and then sin unto death, you will be taken back home by forcibly. Whichever way manner you go home, when you wake up in the heaven, you will realize, I would have put number one priority for doctrine, doctrine, doctrine alone. And that is the moment it will be very problematic for you to understand. Why I have neglected doctrine, though Lord renewed upon me every day, bestowed upon me his grace. And you will never have a chance to come back to this world and to once again grow up in the same physical body to show forth the spiritual resurrection of Christ. So that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, can record and keep upon us the amazing deeds. Though you long for it. Every day being given, what is the betterment, what you are doing for Christ? In this body, have you attained the spiritual resurrection in Christ? Apostle Paul himself says in Philippians 3, I have not yet attained. Therefore, I am running forward to the race that has been kept for me. But we are not able to live behind our worthless life. And look forward to this great unique spiritual life and run for it, the term out as Yusabaya. We are still dying in our roles in nature, perishing to want. Then when you will run for this unique spiritual life. But Apostle Paul recollected and he said, No, I want to run. And he attained that spiritual resurrection, spiritual maturity in Christ. Where is our spiritual resurrection and spiritual maturity in our Lord? When we have not passed the spiritual self-esteem, when we have not looked about the spiritual autonomy, how can we look upon the spiritual maturity in Christ, dear brethren? How can we ever think of? How can we ever look of? How can we ever consider it? Dear brethren, it is of a great pain to note that though we have been new spiritual species in Christ, 
we have been no difference from the Old Testament saint failures. Old Testament saints had a caliber only to rule the nations, to rule the cities. Even the greatest one like Abraham and Moses can rule only the cities. But the church age believer has been given the privilege to rule nations. And not only just to rule big, big nations, they have even given the capacity to become the pillar in the living temple of my God which is going to come. A history page recorded and kept for you in the divine realm of Christ. And every day is a line upon it. What amazing deeds can you record today for Christ in the mental ministry of blood? Get the Holy Spirit to the praise of His glory, to honor His word above His name. You cannot say, today I don't, tomorrow, weekly once I will come. No. Monthly once I will come. No. Every day. Every day is accountable to my Christ. The amazing deeds of my Lord. The wondrous works which we do in this body for Christ have to be recorded every day. And we cannot waste our time. Because we do not know when is the rapture. And happy will be the man when Lord comes back to home to see that his bond slaves are really working for Christ. And if you are a pastor teacher working out to write, directly communicate, and I am saying to only to a male believer, never to a female. If you are a pastor teacher in working out the mental ministry of Lord, get the Holy Spirit as operative base of divine dynasty power for you. And if you are taking in the word of the Lord more clearly, more accurately, then you need to be very accurate, dear brethren. Very much accurate you need to be by not even diminishing a single word of the Lord given for us in both Hebrew as well as in Greek. Every word should have its proper meaning. And it has to be justified in the sight of my Christ, being met the grace of the Lord in the mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, to the praise of Lord God the Father, through His only begotten Son, to His glory. Every word has to be met. It cannot be just given for diminishing. And which way you want to go, you decide. The time for us is very short. Much is given for us, much will be expected from us. And if we are not able to understand the time that we are going through is a time requiring for us to understand the word of the Lord, then take it granted you have lost the battle long back. If Bible doctrine is not number one priority in your life, then no matter what you do, what you think, what you perform, will never cause you to come to the enlightenment work of the divine interpretation of history that this rapture of the church after the post-canon period and if you are not able to fully understand the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit operating in you to do according to the will of Lord God the Father in you because with man all things are possible but with God nothing is, pos nothing is impossible then you have really not lived the life that is required for you Maybe I doubt even the majority of the Christians today who are there in this Christendom of the 21st century have not even touched 1% of this unique spiritual life, far less they have to complete the 100% of this unique spiritual life, either individually or corporately. The corporate witness, wife and husband, individual, individual believer, either male or female, because the male and female are equal, said Galatians 3, not with the spiritual gifts, but with, the, but with this execution of this unique spiritual life, they are equal. And they need to know the truth and the purpose for which they have been given. They need to understand this great, unique spiritual life. Corporately, the church as well will be included. Elders and the assembly of the pastor teacher. So that the next generation could be trained by the elders who are fit to handle it. And if the elders themselves are not pillars for the church, what it will be for you in the coming times? This elders to be trained by the pastor teacher who has this bona fide gift, 
so that they could ordain and really administer the things pertaining to the church so that the propagation of the gospel can go through the missionary work. And just not only giving them the gospel, further developing the teachings of Bible doctrine pertaining to this mystery doctrine of the church and the unique spiritual life wherewith every believer being given the equal privilege and equal opportunity for us. So that even they can become maximum glorification of Christ believers and the logistical grace being bestowed upon them could be converted into super or ultra super grace. And this ultra super grace believers are the winner believers in Christ. But the only one caution what we can tell, we do not know when is the rapture. But every day being renovated upon us, you need to be prepared yourself that today is the last day of your life. And what will be the first primary thing in you to think if today is the last day of your life, what are your priorities? Whom you are going to meet after you die? Will you not go to God, the Father, when you die because as a believer in Christ? Then have you made the path straight to meet him? Have you cleared the account which has to be for him, which have to be given to him as a due of a glory, which you ought to do at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, to get maximum glorification of Christ, and if you have word, and if you have not, then how much is still lacking in you to reach that hundred percent in Christ? Don't ever think the kingdom of God is eating, drinking, and dancing. The kingdom of God deals with the righteousness and truth and holiness of my Christ. Our soul and activated human spirit should pertain the doctrine being energized by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, pertaining to its true righteousness and holiness in Christ. And if we are not able to get and look and understand, then you will never understand the divine interpretation of history. Why you have been kept alive in the midst of this 21st century in this great period of apostasy in the churches. It is an individual challenge for each and every believer to become an inner believer in Christ by executing this great protocol plan of God and leaving behind a great legendary impact in this unseen angelic conflict that goes day by day. This angelic conflict now after the strategic victory of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross is intensified to the core. And every believer is a target. The first strategy of Satan see that they should not believe in Christ. If there are anyone who are believing in Christ, see that they should not grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine because positionally they have been exalted to a greater position than Satan what it had superior then to the chief fallen angel known as Satan, your place is in Christ. Experientially, you need to take it, you need to enjoy it, you need to grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, Satan sees fit that you should not learn the word of the Lord, the second point in strategy of Satan. The first thing see that they should not believe, the second thing see that they should not grow up if they at all believe in Christ. They should not grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Therefore, give them all the worry about softies, all the worry about doctrines, all the worry about tongues, all the worry about miracles, healings, and above all, the worry about making money in the ministry. And cause to neglect the true impartation and inculcation of daily repetition of this great, unique spiritual life of this sophisticated one and totally avoid the mystery doctrine of the church age. It's very great pathetic conditions for us to note that we have been avoiding this great Bible doctrine day by day process. So after the rapture of the church, we will continue with the seven years of tribulation and then we'll come back again in millennium to rule with Christ. So don't ever think Lord is delaying to come to raptures. Do not know the time. But be prepared to look and to understand. Today is a day of salvation. At the same time, if today could be the day of rapture, what are your priorities? And how are your priorities? Though our Lord has graciously bestowed upon us and renewed one more year in our life. So dear brethren, ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next tape. 
Father, I'm grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with through the word. Father, without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, there is nothing we can think of in this earth. We thank thee for the completed can of scripture. We thank thee for the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit being permanently involved in us. Help us to reach that true product where which you have designed for us to the grace of your glory. So that Lord, we could be a praise at the moment of at the moment of judgment seat of Christ. To this extent, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will challenge us, bless us, and enlighten us. Lord, we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.